Okay, so I'm giving here um, a message signal M of T and a carrier signal C of T using, um, so the M of T modulates C of T using DSP amplitude modulation, double sideband modulation. Okay, so I'm looking at page, uh, you can look at page 204 as a reference, well, 203 going on 204 as a reference. Uh, so basically, the um, the modulated signal is going to be a m of t times cosine of 2 pi f t, basically. So the product of these two signals with you know with time a is basically the uh, the modulated signal. So to find the time domain, we just need to multiply this out and get the time domain. Now for the frequency domain, we just need to find a Fourier um, transform of that. Okay, so I'm just going to replace m of t by uh, whatever is m of t. But um, here you have to be a little smart here t and um, basically rewrite your 400t as 2 pi you know something because that will make your life a lot easier when you do the transform okay and plus here you know you have a pi over 3 so you know you're dealing with radians so you just kind of um, um, convert that into radians as well so you multiply by 2 pi and you divide by pi so um, here if you notice if you simplify the pi's you still have 400 t so you didn't really change much right and you have it in the form of 2 pi f. So technically your f here is 200 over pi, but you'll see that later when we do the transform. Now, moving forward, um, you do the same thing for your 500t. So you multiply by 2 pi, and you divide by pi, and um, plus pi over 3, of course. I forgot that. Okay. Erase that so nothing changes here. So plus pi over 3. Okay, so that whole thing underneath um, the bracket is basically m of t. Okay, and so now we can go ahead and multiply by cosine of 2 pi f of t. Now, once again, over here we have 8,000 pi t so we can rewrite that by you know taking out a 2 pi and we have 4000 so we have 2 pi times 4000 t okay so from here um, we just use our trig functions and multiply out factor out etc. So just is math from here for you to simplify. I mean, I don't know how you would do it. Um, you could because there are different ways of do, you're doing it to simplify it here. But you know, you can use your um, trig uh, functions and stuff like that. So I have a cosine in the bracket, so that'll give me cosine squared. So I can factor that out. I can factor the cosine of two pi. And so I would have uh, 4,000 plus 200 over pi, right? Yes, 200 over pi. Okay, so that's the first part, um, t. So don't forget the t. Okay. Plus, um, again, um, a cosine um, to pi four thousand. Now we have a minus here, not plus, but minus two hundred over pi. Okay, so I've simplified um, my cosine, so now I'm going to deal with my sines here. Okay. S 
Okay, so I have 2a sine 2 pi 4,000 250 over pi d Okay, plus now I have a, a plus data here, which is pi over 3. Okay, plus, or I mean minus 2a. Okay, sine to pi 4000 minus 250 over pi. Okay, so I've simplified um, my activity. Now you see how beneficial it is to actually rewrite your signals in a form of, you know, a 2 pi something something. Because we're given 400t here, so, you know, it's always a good idea to rewrite it that way so you could clearly see it. And it will make our life really, really easy when we do the uh, transform. So now let's do that. The frequency domain is, of course, the Fourier transform over our time domain. So let's go to table 202 um, for a cosine function. Uh, we have a delta function in the uh, Fourier transform. For sine, we also have a j in there somewhere, and our theta, if it's needed, if, if we have a theta. So for sines, we're going to have a e to the power, you know, something, something. So let's go ahead and do it. So that's my x of t. So I need to take the f. Fourier transform of that whole thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on that one. So, um, inside the bracket, I have 4000 plus 200 plus um, pi. I mean 200 over pi, excuse me. So I have um, delta f minus 200 over pi. Okay. Plus, so I'm, I'm taking out the, the, the 200 over pi first before I deal with the 4000. Because you, you also use convolution here because there's a multiplication here. Okay. So I deal with that first. So I have f plus 200 over pi. And um, on the other side, I have for the signs, I have a data in this case. So I use e to the power j pi over 3 f minus 250 over pi and then um, minus 2 over j e to the power minus um, j pi over 3 delta F plus 250 over pi plus 250 over pi okay so I dealt with my uh, cosine signs now I'm convoluting that with the 4000 right so using the property of modulation so I would have a one half, one half. So I'm convoluting that with um, one half delta f minus four thousand okay plus um 
f plus four thousand now you can you can do this um on your own and and keep going on this because it, it will take a long time for this video i want to keep it short but um all you need to do is just keep going on that and use the property of of um convolution with delta function and when you can convoluting with delta function it stays that function is the same thing but then you shift it and that's all and so you know you keep going on that one etc the reason why I'm not keep I'm not going first of all I don't want to make this video long but at the same time in the EIT um, the function that they're gonna give you is not gonna take this long but you need to start you know you need to start the problem right so I just wanted to show you how to start basically so um, you know you keep going on this and uh, well in the afternoon you have four minutes anyway but um, it's going to be much shorter than this your, your your m of t would be shorter probably and your t of t is the same thing and then you know you, you multiply and you and you do your convolution so it's not going to take you this long it shouldn't be at least okay so now um the next question is to find the power and um on page two or three you have the total average power is um give it there so you have to square your time domain function and your power is then equal to the um, the um, um, what do you call it limit of t when t goes to infinity minus t half to t and then you know you just do the integral of that one you see it's, it's pretty long but that's the concept really on page 203 so whatever you give in a time domain function you have to find a power you square it and use that that uh, that uh, integral to find it and that's it so um, straightforward right not too bad okay thanks